this thing on? Okay, cue exciting podcast intro. We were created carefully by a creative creator who crafted the cosmos. He caressed the soul of the earth when he came. A baby, crying in a crib that darkness could not comprehend. And then he grew and did his most creative act yet. He painted us red, marking us clean with his death. And he rose again, giving us new threads, so you could look like him, friend. Creative and called. You are more like God than you've been told. Welcome to the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast uh, with your host, myself, Emmanuel Borges de Silva, also known as Eman the Messenger. And um, yeah, how are you, man? How are you doing? Uh, as I ask you pretty much every episode. <laughs> but no, I, I hope that you're doing well. Um, I hope that life is being good to you at the moment. And if life isn't being too good to you at the moment, um, I pray, you know, with all my heart that God is seeing you through all of your struggles and all the different uh, difficulties that you're currently going through. Um, you know, I really hope that um, you're just, you're finding peace in the midst of whatever storm that you're going through right now, you know. Um, I want to just encourage you that no matter what you go through um, in Christ, you know, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purposes. So, um, yeah, I hope you're well. I really do hope you're well. Um, it's been a while since I've uh, sat here <laughs> um, in real time anyway to do a recording. Um, I know that, you know, you guys have been seeing the recordings and you've been hearing the recordings um, on audio podcast. Um, but yeah, a lot of those recordings were done, you know, way in advance, right? You know, I tried to, I tried to bulk uh, record the different things that God uh, gives me, you know, to give you guys, to equip you. Um, so yeah, but it's been a long time since I've sat down and actually done like a live recording uh, just because, boy, life has been, life has been life in, man. There's a lot that's been happening, um, in my life, you know, um, recently we, we lost our, our dad, um, and so, yeah, please be praying for me, you know, please be holding me up in prayer, keep me in your thoughts, um, send me a message, um, and yeah, God will see us through, um, it's been an interesting time processing, uh, grieving and really encountering Jesus like in a, in a deeper, deeper, deeper way. So, um, yeah, that's where I've been. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, we're back, we're back, we're back. And, um, I promised you guys that we would go over, uh, part two, part two of the fasting I guess, series. Um, so if you haven't seen part one, like I would implore you to go back, listen to part one, watch part one, because essentially we talk about um, fasting. Uh, we talk about the origins of fasting, like the biblical origins of fasting. We talk about the benefits of fasting from a physical perspective, a psychological perspective, and the spiritual perspective. And now we're going to talk today more about um how to fast uh how do we fast in a way that is honoring to god how do we fast in a way that is beneficial um what is the difference between a hunger strike a diet and a fast um and all of that good stuff man um i really do hope that this encourages you and that it equips you you know um i really want you to Go away and actually use fasting like it is for your benefit. Um, and it has so many 
benefits. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do, but once you get into a rhythm of doing it, it becomes a lot, a lot easier. So um, buckle up. All right, let's, uh, we're going to look into um, Matthew 6, 16 to 18. So if you've got your Bible, um, turn there with me um, or just listen to me speak. So Jesus says this, now, whenever you fast, do not make a gloomy face as the hypocrites do. For they distort their faces so that they will be noticed by people when they are fasting. Truly, I say to you, they will have their reward in full. But as for you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by people, but by your father who is, who is in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Right, so that's kind of an anchor scripture. Jesus touches on so many things here that I think are, yeah, really worth considering. And obviously, you know, over here on this podcast, you guys know that the aim is to equip um, called and creative people to love God more than their creativity, number one, and number two, to equip called and creative people um, to be unboxed in society, to impact culture, to uh, live a life that is powerful and impactful outside of the church walls, you know? And so hopefully this will help you to do that. Um, little disclaimer. So yeah, let's look at this. Let's, let's look at some of the stuff that Jesus is saying here. So the first thing that I notice here that is really important with fasting and um, just just the importance of fasting is Jesus here, he says, now, whenever you fast, do not make a gloomy face as the hypocrites do. Jesus doesn't say, if you fast, he says, whenever you fast. And I think that's interesting because it kind of assumes that Jesus, uh, Jesus has a worldview that fasting is a thing that people ought to do. Uh, that it ought to be a part of their lifestyle, that fasting is normal. Fasting isn't abnormal. Fasting is normal. Um, but obviously, like, with this world that we uh, live in, um, fasting is seen as abnormal. And eating a lot of food or eating uh, extremely consistently is seen as normal. Um, and if you if you uh, tune into the last episode, you will see that according to scientific scientific research, we weren't actually designed to eat anywhere near the amount of food that we actually eat now, and we were actually designed to go for a long time without food. And once we br once we hit a certain um, a certain time period or a certain wall, our body actually goes into this mode where it starts using up the, the 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 good good reserve stores in our body from previous meals, and we get benefits like a clear mind. We get benefits uh, like um, just just health benefits as well, you know, um, and all these other things and, and reductions in certain uh, risks of certain things. It reduces the risk of breast cancer. It reduces the risk of Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. Um, and things like that, and you just become so much more focused, focused and clear-minded, um, which also helps you to hear from God a lot clearer as well, as we said in the last episode. Um, so let, let's move on to the how to fast, how to fast. Jesus kind of highlights a lot of things here, right? You know, you know, one of the things he says is don't be like the hypocrites, you know, don't distort your faces, don't be noticed by people. Uh, you know, he says that, hey, like when you fast, make it a secret thing. You know, not everyone should know that you're fasting, right? Unless obviously you're on a church, like let's say you're on a church fast, everyone's going to know that, you know, the church is on a church fast. But you don't need to make that obvious to everyone. You should still cream your face. <laughs> As he says here, right? He says, anoint your head with oil <laughs> and wash your face. <laughs> so he's saying like, still like, take care of your hair, cream your face, like, look normal. Don't make it this thing of, yeah, I'm fasting. Look at me. Look at how dreadful I look. 
you know, because as he says, if you're doing it for that reason, then you have your reward, which is this. For those who are listening on audio, I just, I was just, just clapping. Um, because what he's saying is that that will be your reward. Your reward will be that people are impressed. That is it though. He will no longer give you anything for your fasting. Like you will no longer receive anything from that fast that you did. And so here, what is the reward? What is the reward that God wants to give, right? He says here that your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And so what is that reward? What the Lord kind of revealed to me as I was reading the scripture is that, that the reward is anointing and power. Anointing and power. And I'll hopefully be able to tie this into how this affects your creativity and also your callings. Because this is the thing, right? Why should creative people fast? I think, I think personally, that creative people above, you know, many other people, creative people who are producing stuff that people watch, listen to, and, and, and consume should be fasting for this specific reason, anointing and power. Let's read Mark 9, right? Mark 9, 25 to 29. This will kind of speak to the anointing and power piece um, that I'm talking about. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead. So that many people said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Hmm. This kind cannot come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. So we see here that like there are certain things, certain ways that will touch people, certain ways that will break things off of people's lives, you know, by prayer and fasting. And I am a firm believer that God can transmute his anointing through your creativity in order to do those things in people's lives, you know? I've heard of people who would pray and fast before writing, um, before writing a poem and they would deliver that poem and that poem would deliver people. That poem would set people free. I've, I've seen it for myself. I've seen, there have been times where um, I, I'm, I'm in a season of prayer and fasting and I'm delivering spoken word and people are crying profusely at, at the piece and they'll come up to me afterwards and they'll say hey like that really touched me and you know I know that that's not just because of my skill as a poet but it's because of the anointing and power that comes from God through my regular fasting right um, I've heard of people who paint and before painting pieces they fast and they pray over those pieces and, you know, when they um, commission those pieces and they sell those pieces or they give those pieces for free to people, when people glance upon those pieces, they say that they literally feel something, like they feel the tangible presence of God or they feel love or they, they feel joy from the painting. They feel certain things that they needed from God from that painting. You know, the same thing goes with films. Same thing goes with music, you know, like we can't just rely on our skills because it will be entertaining, but it won't deliver people. This is why creatives have to pray and fast. It's no, it's no good you being a cold and creative person, an unboxed, cold and creative individual who says that they're doing uh, art for the kingdom of God. And you want somebody who regularly fasts and prays seriously. Like, like you should be more of a disciple. 
you should be <laughs> you should be more spiritually strong than you are skillful. You should be extremely skillful, but your pursuit should be even more of Jesus in prayer and fasting, even more of the anointing of God in prayer and fasting than just your skill. It will entertain people. It will make people feel good for a second. But does your creativity actually break some things off of people's lives? Does it actually change their minds? Does it actually cast out some demons and spirits that are attaching themselves to those people? When they listen to your music, does it deliver them? When, when, <laughs> when, 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 they, when they watch your short film, does it touch them deeply? That matters, you know? And this is why we have to pray and fast. Otherwise, people aren't encountering Jesus, right? Um, and so, you know, point number one, as I said earlier from the first scripture, which is Matthew 6, um, is don't fast to be noticed by people. You are rewarded by who sees you. You either be rewarded by God with anointing and power to bless people, because he will trust you with that anointing and power. When, when you fast in secret, the reason why God gives you anointing and power is because he trusts you with it. Because you have shown yourself to be somebody who will do the, the grunt work of fasting in secret, not to be noticed by people. You will do that grunt work. And so therefore he can trust you with power, anointing, authorities, the, the, the actual power of God that, um, that actually sets people free, not just entertains them. May it be, hopefully, that as called and creative people in the kingdom of God, that we are entertaining, but we are also powerful. You know, far too often, we have a lot of Christian creators who are extremely entertaining, but your music, your words, your art, it doesn't carry power. It looks good. It looks, it looks awesome. And it's, it's nice. It's great that you have worked so hard on your craft. But what about your spirit, man? Is your spirit, are you really feel, being continually filled with the Holy Spirit through prayer and fasting? That's what the Bible says in Acts. The Bible says that the apostles were continually filled with the Holy Spirit through prayer and fasting. That should inform um, our creativity, right? So I'll read um, Isaiah. Let's read Isaiah 58, 3 to 12. It says, why have we fasted and you do not see? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not notice? Behold, on the day of your fast, you find your desire and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast for contention and strife and to strike with a wicked fist. You do not fast like you have done today to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast like this that I choose? A day for a person to humble himself. Is it for bowing one's head like a reed and for spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed? Will you call this a fast, even an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I choose? To release the bonds of wickedness, to undo the ropes of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. Is it not to break your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house when you see the naked to cover them um and to sorry when you see the naked when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh then your light will break out like the dawn uh oh and your recovery will spring up quickly and your righteousness will go before you the glory of the lord will be your rear guard then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, and if you offer yourself to the hungry and satisfy the need of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness, and your gloom will become like midday, and the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy you satisfy your desire in scorched places and give strength to your bones and you will be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins you will raise up the age-old foundations and you will be called the repairer of the breach the restorer 
of the streets in which to dwell. Amen. Amen. Um, there is a lot <laughs> in, in that scripture. But essentially, like, obviously you can read it in your own time. Isaiah 58 uh, from 3 to 12. But Isaiah is prophesying and God is speaking through him. And God is informing the Israelites of how to fast and what fasting is all about. Yes, as we mentioned earlier, fasting is about breaking yokes. It's about breaking chains. It's about you being a conduit to do those things. But it's not just about you being a conduit to do those things spiritually through your creativity, but also physically, right? Like, like God here is saying that fasting should change your behavior. You know, we, we shouldn't be fasting and our behavior is worse. Like you shouldn't be a worse off person whilst fasting. Fasting is supposed to um, humble you to rely on the spirit more. And the Bible says this, that if you walk in the spirit, then you won't gratify the desires of the flesh. And what are the desires of the flesh? Malice, strife, contention. Remember all these things that were listed in that scripture? You know, there's also the other scriptures in the New Testament that speak about the works of the flesh, you know, uh, pride, arrogance, dissension, uh, rudeness, like, you know, being unkind. These are things that are the works of the flesh. But fasting is supposed to bring you to a point where you are so hungry that like, you're like, I actually need to pray. <laughs> I actually need to pray. Like I need to walk in the spirit. It should cause a change in your behavior, right? Now, practically speaking, what does this mean, right? Because I've, I've kind of given like a, a bit of a lay of the land, right? As to uh, how we ought to think about fasting, right? I've spoken in Matthew 6, you know, about what Jesus said about, you know, fasting in secret and not being like a hypocrite and uh, fasting to be seen by people or to get applauds. You know, we've spoken about Mark, you know, where Jesus is is giving the disciples a key as to what fasting does and how certain spirits and certain things don't get broken unless we have the anointing and power that we gain through fasting and prayer, right? We've got Isaiah 58, which now is spoken about, you know, fasting for the right reasons, uh, fasting and how fasting should change your behavior that we should enter fasts quite seriously if we actually want to gain the fullness of it. If we're entering a fast haphazardly and then we actually end up behaving worse in the fast than we do when we're actually, you know, not fasting, that is not the goal, right? So that's the layer of the land. So now let's look practically, practically about fasting. How should we fast? How should we fast? So, you know, I'll talk about myself here uh, just to give, uh, I guess, a bit, a few pointers. So when I fast, um, I tend to do water fasts, right? Unless I get like a specific instruction to do a dry fast, I do water fasts. Usually my fasts are from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I try to do that twice a week, right? Um, some people... Uh, it might be uh, uh, six till three. It might be um, 24 hours with just water. It might be um, 48 hours. It might be a 21-day fast. It might be a 40-day fast, right? All of these things are possible. And you can choose between doing a dry fast, which is where essentially you eat and drink nothing, right? Throughout uh, the time period, whether it's six to six, whether it's six to three, and all of these other things, right? And remember what I said in the last episode. Right now, as I'm saying that, you think that that's a detrimental thing. It's actually not. It feels really bad whilst you're doing it. And it feels bad, like, for the first few hours. But you hit this thing in your body. It's this biological wall in your body that you hit. Where you actually go into a mode where you're using the reserves in your body. And you start to feel a lot clearer. And your body starts actually cleaning itself out. And so actually what's happened is we've conditioned and trained our brains to getting hungry, right? Because your brain is the signal. The, your brain is the signal with your stomach. So it's, it's a conditioning thing where we are told 
that we're hungry. We're told we're hungry because we're so used to eating every two to three hours. And so you have to push, you have to push through that. And you won't faint, you won't die. Uh, trust me, like I've done this thing <laughs> enough times and I'm sure there are many other Christians who can attest to this, that um, it's possible and it is so beneficial. As I said in, in the first episode, if you haven't watched or listened to that, I would implore you to do that. Um, I will say, so an, another point practically is whatever fast you do, Make sure that you feel a deep need for God. Like a fast is not a diet change. It is the absence of food. It should not feel easy. It should not feel as if you need that. Like it, it should feel, sorry, as if you actually need to eat. And guess what? In those moments where you feel like you need to eat, it is your brain, remember? It's, it's, it's your brain's conditioning telling you that you're going to die when you're actually not going to die. So in those moments where you feel like you need to eat, that is when you're supposed to pray. That is when you're supposed to open your Bible and read the word of God. You're retraining your body and your mind to rely on God more than relying on food. And that is where there is a transference of anointing and power. Right? Point number two, practically, is this. The Daniel fast, as much as people love it, is not a fast. It is a diet. Daniel did that diet because he, did, he was not going to eat food that was sacrificed to idols. Daniel fast is not a fast. It was a specific diet that Daniel did because he didn't want to eat food that was sacrificed to idols. Fasting is the absence of food and sometimes the absence of food and water. That is what fasting is. So when you're doing Daniel fast and you're praying, now look, dude, the diet is good. It's good. It's nice and healthy. But that that's not that's not a fast. If you're really looking for like anointing and power, doing that as a fast is not gonna give you that. You know? Of course, also be led by the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit says do a Daniel fast, then do a Daniel fast. But more time than not, the Holy Spirit will tell you to fast fast. <laughs> We often dodge that because it, you know, it's not pleasant. A Daniel fast is a lot more comfortable than an actual fast. Yeah. So that's point number two. Daniel fast is not a fast. It is a diet. It is, it is a diet. And the Bible shows us that. It's very clear. I think culturally speaking, we've taken Daniel's diet and we've called it a fast and it's not a fast. It never has been. So that, you know, I just, I really want to clear that up because it's, it's for our benefit that we actually fast properly. We get more from it, guys. We get more spiritual power. We get more character change. We get more behavioral change if we fast properly. So, like, why not fast properly and do these things that are diets and that are cultural and not biblical? Whenever the disciples fasted, they were not doing Daniel fast. They were not, they were, they were not eating. That's what they were doing. And so if we want the power that we see in the Gospels, we want, we want, we want the, anoint, the anointing and the authority on our creativity and our callings that we see in Acts and we see in these books, we actually have to do what they did. And the Holy Spirit will help us. The Holy Spirit will fill us up and we will feel much better as we go through these fasts. Um, the last practical point that I guess I'll give about fasting is... Um, if you do have like a health condition, consult your GP as to how you will fast. Um, you know, I am aware that a small percentage of people will have certain health conditions that restrict them from fasting. Um, and so I think it's good to consult your GP about that. But one thing I will say is that you'll probably have to consult your GP more so for a dry fast than a water fast. The reason I say that is because it is scientifically proven that human beings can survive on water for a very, very, very long time. So really and truly, most people still can fast. You still can, you know, um, and it's for your benefit. But if you're doing a dry fast, I would say, yes, definitely speak 
uh, to your GP um, and make sure that you, the way that you are is set up in that way that you can do that. And my last piece of advice, as I said a bit earlier, is listen to the Holy Spirit. And that that's, that's a good thing. And there's also a nerve wracking thing, right? Like, listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may tell you to do something that is uncomfortable. But if you obey by faith, the Holy Spirit will take you through it and you will receive power, authority, anointing and behavioral change uh, more than you ever done before in your life. You know, so don't be scared of what the Holy Spirit may lead you to do. Some of you who are listening and watching this, you do get thoughts. You do. The Holy Spirit says to you, hey, do a three day fast. Hey, fast on this day. It is not just your thoughts, my friend. You are not that good. <laughs> you are not that good. Your flesh would not want you to fast. The only place that that could ever come from is the Holy Spirit of God. The devil does not want you to fast and pray. That's why when Jesus was fasting and praying, what did the devil try and do? The devil said, turn this stone into bread. The devil don't want you to fast and pray. The devil will do anything he can whilst you are fasting and praying or even outside of fasting and praying to stop you from connecting to God in the way you're supposed to and building the anointing that you're supposed to um, build, you know? I really want to see creatives who are anointed and powerful in their creativity. They're not just gifted and talented and entertaining, but when we actually hear your content and we see your content, we're like, we're actually delivered from certain things. Like we actually feel God on what you're saying. You know, that's the goal. That's why we're here. That's why God gave us our gifts. It's to work in partnership with his spirit, you know? And so I, I pray that this encourages you. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. Um, you know, if there's anything that I haven't gone over that you think I should go over, please like leave it in the comments um, on YouTube um send me a message on instagram like um i would love to go over anything that is a bit confusing for people um in this realm but um yeah that's been it man that's been it for today um yeah i'm done <laughs> um have a good day have a good week ahead and get fasting eman the messenger out hey eman here I just want to say thank you so much for watching this podcast episode or listening to this podcast episode. Um, we really appreciate it over here. We're just trying to reach as many unboxed, called and creative people as possible. And with you watching it, liking it, sharing it and commenting, this really does help a ton. So please, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, if you haven't shared, if you haven't commented, um, or given the review for the podcast, uh, please, please, please do that uh, now if you can. Okay, till next time.